Well, hey guys, it's Eczema Awareness Month. I'm here at the drugstore to check out the best skincare products for eczema. Eczema is actually an umbrella term for seven different types of skin problems. One of the more common that you hear about is atopic dermatitis, which is a chronic inflammatory skin condition. There are no cures for it. It can come and go. It can first appear really at any stage of life, but most often appears for the first time in early childhood. It can kind of burn out, resolve, and then later on in life comes back. With atopic dermatitis, the main issue is you have a problem with the skin's moisture barrier. It allows more irritating things to get in and water to escape. So that leads to flares of dry, itchy, inflamed skin. It also makes you more vulnerable to becoming sensitized and subsequently allergic to things that you put on your skin. This is why it is often strongly advised that when you're choosing skincare products for people with eczema, you avoid fragrance because it is the most common allergen in skincare products. Now there are a ton of other potential allergens and just because you're using fragrance-free products does not mean you're not going to develop an allergy to something, but it's just a word to the wise. If you have atopic dermatitis, especially if your skin is flared up, that is a situation where you are just more vulnerable to becoming sensitized to ingredients. Along those lines, you want to keep your skincare routine really simple, but the cornerstone of eczema management for atopic dermatitis in particular is moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. Moisturizers sort of stand in and aid in your barrier function uh, because they help reduce the penetration of irritants in the skin and they help replenish lost moisture and reduce what's called transepidermal water loss. Colloidal oatmeal is a wonderful ingredient in moisturizers or skincare products for atopic dermatitis because it has an array of soothing anti-inflammatory compounds and it also can help in reducing water loss from the skin. It is a skin protectant. That's why it's actually called out here on the label because it is an FDA approved over-the-counter skin protectant. The problem with atopic dermatitis or a problem, getting back to the barrier defect issue, is a reduction in uh, there's a problem with ceramide synthesis. Ceramides are lipids that are really important for your skin barrier. Patients with atopic dermatitis also have a problem with filaggrin, which is likewise very important for the skin barrier and the moisture barrier. When you think about your skin barrier, just imagine a brick wall where the bricks are these little shells of cells called corneocytes and then the mortar that holds the cells together is like lipids and things of that sort. So if you don't have optimal levels of those lipids and mortar components, you're more likely to lose water from the skin. And that's exactly what happens with atopic dermatitis. Now applying moisturizers will help your skin in producing its own natural moisturizing factors and barrier components. And there's evidence that applying ceramides to the skin, as you will find in all of CeraVe's products, can help in stimulating that as well. Now when eczema, atopic dermatitis is really flared up, Ointments can be a great option, and they're really aggressive in their ability to reduce transepidermal water loss. The CeraVe healing ointment is great because you have the ceramides there, which may help with your barrier, and it also has hyaluronic acid, which can help in improving moisture content in the stratum corneum, and ultimately that really helps your barrier to go along and act right and mature properly and function better when the water content is optimized. Like any skin condition, it's very important to keep in mind that it is very individualized. What is helpful for one person will be aggravating for another. So there aren't necessarily hard and fast rules that if you have atopic dermatitis or other types of eczema, you can and cannot use X, Y, and Z. The exception being is if you have an allergy to an ingredient, and then in that case, you have to avoid it. Patients who have atopic dermatitis are a lot more likely at some point in their life to develop allergic contact dermatitis, which is another type of eczema. Plain petroleum jelly is gonna be your best friend in that situation because it's basically free of common allergens and irritants. It's just plain petroleum jelly and your immune system does not really care about it. Whereas if you use things like, I mean, any of these products marketed to people who have eczema, if you have a contact allergy, it's possible you, you could be allergic to anything in these. No product, even if it's labeled as hypoallergenic, no product is necessarily you know, completely off the table for potentially having an allergy to something in it. Right here, we have the Walgreens Advanced Repairing Body Lotion. 
is a generic aka store version of vaseline's intensive care uh, advanced repair which is these are these are great options either one you could spend 10.99 or five dollars and 49 cents it's going to do the same thing for you truthfully if you have atopic dermatitis you don't need to spend more money for the same thing unless you just like staying brand loyal to vaseline um, this product has dimethicone and mineral oil both are going to help with reducing water loss and petrolatum so this is a great product for eczema one of my favorites the eczema relief cream from eucerin it has colloidal oatmeal again called out here as a skin protectant but it also has ceramide again applied to the skin may help with the barrier and it has licorice root compounds from licorice root which are anti-inflammatory and may help in reducing uh, redness and irritation now many patients with atopic dermatitis also have keratosis pilaris rough and bumpy skin basically little rough bumps that often happen like on the upper arms the thighs but also can occur on the face so you get this buildup of dry skin and that can become inflamed so you get a, a background of redness with these little rough bumps moisturizers with urea can help soften and exfoliate that rough and bumpy stuff and improve moisture content in the skin reducing flares but a word of warning to those of you who have atopic dermatitis if you use a moisturizer with urea and you apply it to atopic dermatitis when it's flaring up and like really rashy especially if it's oozy it will sting most likely so be careful this may be helpful to some of you who have atopic dermatitis especially if you have rough and bumpy skin but for others this could this could really make you uncomfortable but this is a good product from cetaphil it has urea in it great for rough and bumpy skin 20 percent um a little too strong for the face though Here's another option though that is a lot easier to tolerate, does not sting as, is not, is less likely to sting um, and is beneficial for keratosis pilaris. It's polyhydroxy acid. Polyhydroxy acid likewise helps with improving moisture content and softening, a little bit more gently softening we'll say in comparison to urea, softening and exfoliating that dry stuff. Coconut oil is a, a an ingredient that you know, for some people, they note it aggravates their acne. But uh, truthfully, when it comes to natural oils, coconut oil is one that really stands out as having some research behind it to improve dry skin with atopic dermatitis. Now, I come over here to the sunscreen section because this can be a challenge choosing a sunscreen that does not um, burn, sting, and or aggravate their atopic dermatitis. It's very important to be protecting your skin from the UV rays. What uh, UV actually damages the moisture barrier, so long term it can end up making the symptoms worse. So sunscreens that are organic, aka chemical, a lot of patients with atopic dermatitis find they sting and they're irritating. Specifically those that are found here in the U.S. because we don't have as many filters um, that are approved to be used in our organic sunscreens here. So it kind of, you know, ties a hand, so to speak, of the manufacturers. They have less wiggle room to create more aesthetically desirable formulas that feel good on the skin. So those of you who watch me from like Canada, throughout Europe, Japan, you know, in Asian countries, I mean, basically anywhere outside of the US, this whole avoid organic sunscreens if you have eczema, encouragement line probably doesn't apply to you but here it is not uncommon for patients who have atopic dermatitis to say these organic sunscreens they just burn they sting so in that case we do suggest you know mineral sunscreens again you don't have to spend a lot unfortunately mineral sunscreens they do tend to leave that white cast i mean they do there's no let's let's not let's not <laughs> pretend that they don't um so this one is is a great option because it's in a very moisturizing base one of the nice things about zinc though is it is anti-inflammatory so to a certain extent it may help now that being said a lot of mineral sunscreens end up being drying for people so you go on this hunt for the best sunscreen for you. And again, what works out for one person may not work out for another. This is a good one from Banana Boat if you're looking for an inexpensive mineral sunscreen. And see here, approved OTC. That means that 
Um, if you have a flexible spending account with your health insurance, this, this, this will qualify. Again, I do suggest avoiding sunscreens that have fragrance in them because that is a more common allergen. Now, you can be become allergic to the active ingredients in sunscreens. It's a lot less common than just becoming allergic to fragrance in skincare but it does happen. I have a video all about sunscreen allergy. You need to check it out if you're one of those who says that you're allergic to sunscreen. Now, remember at the start of the video, I told you that there are actually seven different types of eczema, and this video is primarily focusing on atopic dermatitis, but another type of eczema is seborrheic dermatitis. Seborrhea meaning excessive oiliness, and um, it's actually related to dandruff. But here's the thing, people who have atopic dermatitis over time, they can develop um, problems with the little yeast that also drives seborrheic dermatitis. It's called malassezia. And a lot of atopic, a lot of patients with atopic dermatitis, especially facial atopic dermatitis, find that they're able to achieve better control if they incorporate an anti-dandruff shampoo to treat their scalp a couple of times a week. And that helps um, because the anti-dandruff ingredients like ketoconazole, which is in Nizoral, or selenium sulfide, or zinc pyrithione, which is in head and shoulders, these help reduce the burden of that malassezia yeast. And a lot of patients with atopic dermatitis find that it actually can help their facial eczema. Vanny Cream actually has a fragrance-free zinc pyrithione shampoo. But if you do have an itchy scalp, don't shy away from coal tar shampoos. They can really alleviate the symptoms of itch. Now this particular shampoo, it does have fragrance, but again, less of an issue for those of you uh, because it's not gonna be left on the, on the scalp, but coal tar can be really soothing for itch. So we don't have it here in the drugstore usually. Sometimes you can find it, but a while ago I did a video on a um, topical called ichthamol, which is kind of similar to how coal tar works in that it has these anti-inflammatory compounds in it that are soothing, but be forewarned, it smells very foul and odd, and it is dark brown ichthamol. Um, I'm going to link my video on ichthamol down below. Game changer if you have hand eczema. And it's we weepy, rashy, itchy, and you're like wanting to dig your fingernails into the little bubbly, boily skin. Try that out, it's very soothing. It takes the itch away pretty quickly. This Happy Cappy from Dr. Eddie's, this is a great option though for controlling the yeast up there and you know, may help you out if you have facial, uh, if you have seborrheic dermatitis and or atopic dermatitis. And this one is free of fragrance. It's not super drying. It can also be used as a face wash too. Earlier we were talking about how colloidal oatmeal is really nice as a skin protectant and doesn't tend to sting or burn. If you have atopic dermatitis and it's flared up and miserable, try this Aveeno Baby Eczema Therapy Balm. It really creates a nice soothing barrier. It also has ceramide in it uh, and then all of the good OD goodness, dimethicone. It's not as greasy as you might think when you're putting it on. This is another great option for weepy, rashy, inflamed skin for any type of eczema, but atopic dermatitis in particular, uh, the oatmeal bath. It does make a mess, but a pro tip, you can actually reconstitute this in like some water in a bowl and soak gauze or a uh, washcloth in it and then do like a soothing compress. Works really well. Okay, when it comes to eczema, bathing is a delicate balance and a slippery slope. On the one hand, overbathing can further weaken your skin barrier. Especially when I say overbathing, I mean like bathing multiple times a day, using way too much body wash, wash or bathing in really hot water. However, you don't want to avoid bathing because dust, pollutants, aero allergens settle on the skin and can aggravate the atopic dermatitis because again you have a weakened barrier so more stuff penetrates so my suggestion when it comes to bathing is make it a daily habit do it at night time don't do it first thing in the morning because again you want to rinse off all of that stuff that may have settled on the skin you want to remove it before you go to bed because the symptoms of eczema get much worse at night when you're trying to sleep and disrupt sleep quality so bathing at night is much better for you than bathing during the daytime 
Um, and the other reason is that it helps remove some shedding skin cells, which otherwise, if you don't do that and you get into your bed, they're shed into your bedding and become a favorable uh, food snack for dust mites, which can further aggravate uh, not only eczema, but uh, it's comorbidity of asthma. Comorbid just means another issue that occurs alongside an issue. People who have atopic dermatitis, they often have asthma and dust mites are a nightmare for asthma. So bathe at night, keep the showers short, don't use super hot water. Choose your body wash wisely. Again, avoid fragrance. Body washes marketed to people with eczema generally are gentler. Um, and they contain ingredients to help replenish moisture. The other tip is don't just use body wash from head to toe and use a ton of it. Make sure you just use it to the areas that are visibly soiled and that have been exposed to the elements. If you are indoors most of the day wearing pants in an office job, sitting at a desk, you do not need to be soaping up your legs. That much. You know, you don't. Um, and that can aggravate the eczema. You wanna focus in the skin folds and uh, any visibly soiled areas and make sure you rinse it off that can be a major issue for people with atopic dermatitis especially is the body wash gets trapped in the skin folds further weakens the skin barrier leads to flares of the eczema all right let's talk about steroids um, prescription steroids are the mainstay for eczema management they do have side effects that can occur that's why um, following up with your dermatologist is key to making sure that you are getting the right response and that you are not developing side effects but don't shy away from them if you have been prescribed them that is why they fail people not using them they work really well for atopic dermatitis it's not just putting a band-aid on the situation it's kind of like your house you know it gets dirty you don't say well wiping down the floors and picking everything up is just putting a band-aid on it because it's only gonna come right it's only gonna get messy again uh, yeah, but like not picking up is just making the mess even messier. It's kind of how you can think of steroids. And make sure you use them as long as the doctor says to use them because that's another reason why they fail is people see their skin gets better and they're like, okay, I'm gonna stop this. Ugh, don't stop prematurely, just use them as directed. All I have to say, hydrocortisone ointment. This is an over-the-counter steroid that's super duper weak. Um, it can be really, really helpful for people who have bug bites. That's where I find it to be the most useful. But otherwise, it's super wimpy. If you have atopic dermatitis, this, it, it, it really doesn't, doesn't do much for you, to be frank. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's super, super weak. If you have ex eczema that's weepy and oozy, oozing fluids, get yourself some of this. Thank me later. A medicated soap, Don Burroughs, aluminum acetate. This is a game changer. One of the worst things about having atopic dermatitis is the itch. Like it will seriously mess up your life for sure, for sure. I mean, serious quality of life, mental health struggles related to just being itchy all the time. It messes up your sleep. Um, and I, I can go on and on and on about how harmful the itch uncontrolled can be to your life. Uh, now, moisturizers will help reduce itch. Cool compresses can help reduce itch. Um, avoiding triggers is key for managing itch, but uh, topicals that contain promoxin can help temporarily distract those little itch signals. So this is an option, this moisturizing anti-itch lotion. Then there's Sarna. Sarna has menthol in it, which is, um, or at least the Sarna original has menthol. Menthol will help distract those itch signals, but it is a fairly common allergen so just be aware of that same thing with the camphor you can become allergic to that and fragrance um walgreens version though is a promoxine lotion free of fragrance and then the sarna sensitive that's a dupe for sarna sensitive sarna sensitive fragrance free it has promoxine in it sarna original is the one that's got got the camphor and the menthol in it Whatever you do, don't tell somebody with eczema to stop scratching. It's like, you know, blowing in someone's face and telling them to stop blinking. It is just not helpful information. And most of the time, people who have atopic dermatitis, they scratch and they don't even realize they're scratching. That's why it messes up their sleep. So yeah, don't tell people that. But one of the reasons why scratching is such a harmful, not unhelpful behavior, it feels really good. 
but it's not helpful because the scratching is traumatic to the skin and further worsens the barrier and brings in all this inflammation that otherwise aggravates the disease even further. And you introduce uh, bacteria into the eczema from your fingernails. Addressing the itch is really essential for managing eczema. And once the condition gets under control, the itch can subside. Itch, I mentioned this earlier, gets a lot worse at night. So bathing at night before you go to bed can help cut down on that. And greasing up with a hydrating moisturizer can also help cut down on the itch. And then relaxing. Stress will bring out the itch even more. Speaking of scratching, bandages can be really helpful to serve as a barrier, prevent you from scratching, especially in your sleep. Hydrocolloid is a great option. Um, and the other thing that can help cut down on scratching is to wear gloves to sleep in if you can tolerate it. If you have a patch of eczema like on the arm or the leg that's really inflamed and itchy, you can, after you get out of the shower, apply plain petroleum jelly and wrap it up in gauze. It'll really help accelerate barrier recovery and help with the healing of the eczema to do that. All right, you guys, so much to talk about in this video. I barely scratched, get it, a little eczema joke, the surface, but I hope you all enjoyed this video. On the end slate is going to be my last drugstore video where we went through and talked all about different antioxidants. So check that one out next. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.